So if you want to live longer, the mathematical equivalent function is delay the onset of chronic disease, not figure out ways to live longer once you have chronic disease. It's worth noting that unfortunately, the entire healthcare system is mostly geared towards the opposite. Prevention is not really the mainstay of medicine. Medicine has had its greatest impacts or its greatest efforts basically on what to do once you have a disease, how do you live longer? So double clicking on this idea a little bit, we say, okay, well, now that you've accepted the idea that we're going to delay the onset of chronic disease in as much as we want to live longer, what are the major pillars of chronic disease? And they are basically four things. I think of them as sort of three disease processes and then one sort of overarching principle. So the three main disease pillars are atherosclerotic disease, so cardiovascular disease and cerebrovascular disease, cancer, and neurodegenerative disease, of which Alzheimer's disease is the most common. And then when you add the fourth, which is kind of the foundational disease, which is really a spectrum of everything that goes from hyperinsulinemia to insulin resistance to fatty liver disease to type 2 diabetes, I consider that kind of one big spectrum that effectively becomes the foundation upon which these others exist. And so, as you know, in the book, we refer to those as the four horsemen of disease, or the four horsemen of chronic disease. And so when you look at those four things, the spectrum of everything from hyperinsulinemia to type 2 diabetes, the atherosclerotic diseases, cancer, and the neurodegenerative diseases, that amounts to a little over 80% of deaths in people over 50 who do not smoke. So that's non-trivial. And in fact, in the spirit of starting with the 80-20 principle, that's really where we want to focus most of our efforts. The other side of this coin, which is the health span side, comes down to these three pieces, the cognitive piece, the physical or structural piece, and the emotional piece. And the good news here is you get one really easy one for free, which is the cognitive piece. So most of the efforts we put into preserving cognition are basically directly in line with the efforts we will make to reduce the risk of dementia. So if you're sort of picturing me on a whiteboard, the way I'd be explaining this is on the left-hand side, I'd have longevity, uh, pardon me, lifespan, and I'd have these four horsemen. And then on the other side, I'd have health span, and I'd list these three things out. And there'd be a big solid line between dementia and cognitive preservation because they are so lockstep. So everything you're doing on one, you're basically getting the benefit on the other. The second one is the physical exoskeleton. And this is, I think for many people, the first one that really starts to compromise quality of life, at least in my experience. For most people, it's the knee pain, back pain, hip pain, neck pain, that is the first thing that really starts to encroach on quality of life. And it occurs decades before a person takes their final breath. And as you know, that's one of the things I'm so maniacally obsessed with. There's no time that's too soon to start caring about that, right? You could be, we have patients that are in their 30s who have no medical problems to speak of, and yet we are really hunkered down on trying to make sure that when they're in their 80s and 90s, they have the physical body of someone who's in their 50s or 60s. And then lastly, the emotional front, this seems to be the one that is by far least tethered to age. And I think for the purpose of simplicity today, I'm not going to go into that one because it doesn't really factor as profoundly as the labs. So the question then is how much do labs inform each of those things? Again, the four horsemen and call it the exoskeleton. So, cause again, cognition, you're getting sort of on the same thing as dementia. So then the next thing I would talk about with a patient is sort of double clicking on what drives risk reduction in each of those things. Thank you for listening to today's sneak peek AMA episode of The Drive. If you're interested in hearing the complete version of this AMA, you'll want to become a member. We created the membership program to bring you more in-depth exclusive content without relying on paid ads. Membership benefits are many and beyond the complete episodes of the AMA each month, they include the following ridiculously comprehensive podcast show notes that detail every topic, paper, person, and thing we discuss on each episode of The Drive. 
access to our private podcast feed, the Qualies, which were a super short podcast, typically less than five minutes, released every Tuesday through Friday, which highlight the best questions, topics, and tactics discussed on previous episodes of The Drive. This is particularly important for those of you who haven't heard all of the back episodes. It becomes a great way to go back and filter and decide which ones you want to listen to in detail. Really steep discount codes for products I use and believe in, but for which I don't get paid to endorse and benefits that we continue to add over time. If you want to learn more and access these member-only benefits, head over to peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe. Lastly, if you're already a member, but you're hearing this, it means you haven't downloaded our member-only podcast feed where you can get the full access to the AMA and you don't have to listen to this. You can download that at peteratiamd.com forward slash members. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all with the ID Peter Atia MD. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast player you listen on. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. Mm-hmm.